this episode of DDB Talks, our video series featuring the brightest minds, most interesting stories and tales of unexpected works from all around the world. I'm Lindsay Bennett and today I'm joined by Marty O'Halloran, who is celebrating one year since he became global CEO of our network. It's been a big year for DDB and I wanted to use this milestone to reflect on some of the most significant moments from the last 12 months. Let's go back to the beginning, last July, when you took on the role from New Zealand Marty. What stood out to you as the biggest opportunity for our network? Well, I think the number one priority for me was our people. You know, we were uh, you know, a couple of months into uh, lockdown in uh, various parts around the world. And, uh, you know, the first thing was to reach out to all of our leaders, uh, you know, really get an understanding of where we're at in terms of uh, how we're going to manage this pandemic. Uh, and go from there. And so I, I think it's just amazing what we've still been able to achieve over the last uh, 12 months, 18 months really, since uh, the um, lockdown started, but 12 months since uh, I've, I've sort of taken on this role. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just really proud of what we've achieved in terms of, you know, looking after our people, still producing amazing work, uh, getting great accolades for our work around the world, uh, winning business, um, you know, growing existing clients, are uh, all in such a difficult time. So uh, I'm just so proud of what our people have been able to achieve, uh, given all of the challenges we've had in front of us. A unique situation. And I can imagine when you took on this role 365 days ago, a lot of what you were looking at was pandemic related. What have been the other opportunities and, and priorities uh, that you've been focusing on? Well, the main thing for me was to set up a really clear business plan uh, with the global leadership team. And I'm really pleased what we've been able to achieve in terms of clarity, in terms of where we're going as a business, uh, and also how we've positioned our business and the rollout of Unexpected Works, which is continuing, I think is giving us something that we can all strive towards in terms of the quality of the creative that we aim to do in each one of our offices. Uh, there's still a long way to go, uh, and uh, but every day I'm just excited to see how the different offices around the world are grabbing a hold of um, unexpected works and uh, you know deploying it in their in their markets. Uh, and again, I think over the next um, six months, where we're going to be building our plans going into 2022, and a big part of that will be how we execute our plan to win, uh, which is a very clear blueprint in terms of how we're going to grow DDP and how we're going to actually really um, blow out the unexpected works in everything that we do uh, across the world. Let's talk more on unexpected works because it was such a huge undertaking and someone that was a part of that process. It was such an incredible representation of how we can come together as a network and achieve something amazing. Why was it important to evolve our positioning as a network at this time? Well, I think I don't think we had a really clear uh, unified global positioning and uh, and importantly, we developed it with the uh, the network being involved all the way through the process. And we reached out to a couple of hundred of our leaders around the world as we brought the thinking together. Uh, and that, that that's really important to me because as a result, I think we've got ownership of unexpected works you know, right across the world. And, you know, unexpected works is more than just a positioning statement we put on uh, some of our marketing activity. It's actually, it, it's something that should be the driving force of everything we do. Uh, and also I think it gives us something uh, that we can talk about in the marketplace. And uh, credit to you, Lindsay, and the rest of the uh, communications and marketing uh, teams around the world, because it's actually given us something that we can uh, take into our local markets that we can use globally and regionally to be really clear about what DDB uh, is going to promise its clients, but also what, importantly, what we're going to promise our staff in terms of what we think um, uh, they can achieve uh, in their careers while they're at DDB. 
And Unexpected Works, how does it address the challenges we are facing, not only as an agency, but as an industry as well? Well, I think, I think in the, you know, uh, as we said sort of in the launch, you know, creativity is the most powerful force in business. And, you know, we have enormous challenges uh, around the world right now uh, as we as we still navigate COVID. And, uh, you know, the next 12 months is still going to be quite challenging for us. And I think unexpected works were in unexpected times. Uh, and our, our role is to help uh, all of our clients using our creativity to grow and position them in a, a world that is changing the whole time. And, you know, the COVID has made it difficult for us to operate our businesses, but it has change the way we behave uh you know and some of those behaviors will not will not go back to exactly how they were so uh we're in unexpected times and that's why you need the creativity that we we uh have always done since uh ddb first started under bill Pernback. uh and you know it's it's true to who we are uh but uh i think it's more important than ever in you know the what will be the most disruptive time in our lifetimes uh that you know no one would have predicted what we've been through the last 18 months and as i said for at least for the next 12 months we're going to feel this disruption so unexpected works is clearly something we should all be very proud of what other initiatives and accolades uh, that have you been proud of in the last 12 months that have come out all across the regions well, I think I think the initiatives in terms of how we've been able to work remotely is 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 just amazing. You know, the fact that you know the you know the majority of our people, I'd say eighty five percent of our people for the majority of the last twelve months have been working remotely. So that's extraordinary. We've been able to still produce the work we have. So I think that's the most important thing for me. Well, we've learned a lot about working in different ways, which is we will take forward uh, into the future. But it's been amazing, some of the initiatives. And, you know, I think a great one, and it was featured on your uh, last TDB talks, was for the win in terms of, and what I love about that is it's an initiative that was actually driven from the people of DDB, from people that are passionate about gaming. And all we did was, 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 was actually see the groundswell of enthusiasm and just make it easy for them to, you know, launch that network and, uh, you know, do something really proactive in the marketplace. It's really been noticed uh, by the industry, the gaming industry, and also a lot of our competitors. So, you know, you're onto something. So from that point of view, uh, really proud of, uh, of that team. Uh, I'm also, uh, I think the, um, the global planning team is doing an amazing job in terms of some of the tools, some of the knowledge that we're uh, giving our people um, uh, through the brain uh, and the platform that that's, that is. And I, I think that's going to be amazing how that develops over the, um, the next 12 months and a great, great initiative that really has been turbocharged out of the challenges with COVID in terms of how we're going to communicate and share knowledge around the network. You know, one of the great strengths of DDB is the federalist nature of our agencies, and we're fiercely independent around the world, but I want to create a, a bigger global community. And I think the uh, the example of the brain and what that will deliver uh, is, is, is going to be fantastic in terms of how we share uh, uh, ideas, knowledge, uh, strategic thinking around the world. And it links beautifully also to what we're doing uh, from a creative point of view under Ari's leadership as well, in terms of how we bring that creative community together with that knowledge that the brain has and, the, and our ability to then share the best ideas around the world as well, which is uh, so important. Yeah, Gavin in the Gavin Cheng, the CEO of DDB for the Win, in that episode of DDB Talk, said that DDB for the Win is electrifying the DDB brand globally, and that line has really stuck with me, and I think is a good representation of how we're modernising our agency through things like DDB for the Win. And I've been using the brain; I love it. So everyone, get on that as as quick as you can. So Marty, your personal experience with the network is 
is a unique one and an interesting one. And you have been with our network for over three decades, starting as an account manager in Melbourne, Australia, if you haven't already noticed the accents that we both have. Um, it's safe to say that you know this network extremely well, but what surprised you taking on this role? Uh, well, I think the advantage I had was I do know the network really well. Um, what what it wasn't a surprise, but what I just loved was how the network has rallied behind me, and and it says a lot about the humanity within DDB and the culture that we have, and uh, it was wonderful to feel that support from the other leaders around the world, uh, and you know we all share a, an absolute passion for creativity. And uh, for me, it's just been wonderful sort of uh, reaching out uh, uh, more than I ever have uh, from doing my own, uh, my uh, old role, just to sort of see that passion that exists uh, around the world. And, and so for me, that's uh, it's just so gratifying that uh, that passion still exists, that was uh, there when Bill Burnback started this agency. And, you know, the desire to be the best in the world and also, the thing that makes DDB, I think, different to a lot of other agencies is our leaders truly believe that we have to create a, an environment where our people can achieve more than they ever imagined they could in their careers. Uh, and for me, that's uh, that's uh, that's hasn't been a surprise, but it's been wonderful to see, even with the challenges of COVID, that that's where our leaders are really focused, and it, it absolutely is where I am focused. And that's why some of the initiatives we're rolling out are very much about our people um, and how we can create an environment where they can, you know, deliver and create the most amazing ideas. Culture is something I know that you're super passionate about, but what some people might not know is that as chairman of Australia and New Zealand, the region consistently landed in the top three for the DDB voice rankings. Can you tell us what the secret is to creating a thriving culture? Well, the, the, the simple model of running a great agency is about focus on your people and culture first. That drives great creative product. And then, then that will drive great business outcomes in terms of revenue or profit growth uh, for DDB. And, you know, I was inspired by uh, uh, Jim Heskett, who is a Harvard Business School professor, and I was fortunate to spend some time with him, uh, you know, uh, about 15 years ago. And, you know, his academic studies reinforced to me what I knew in my gut. And, if, and, and so... For all of our leaders, the thing I always say is our job is to focus on our people first and the culture that we create. And to do that, it's about the environment we uh, work in. It's about the way we communicate. It's about our values. It's about being good, honest humans uh, and you know, treating each other with respect. Uh, there's no room for bullies in DDB. Uh, you know, from my point of view, it's got to be a culture where teams come together uh, with a combined uh, ambition to do the most amazing um, creative in each of our markets. So I think if you get those elements right, you set the foundations uh, for any agency to be great. Uh, because, you know, when people, uh, you know, I really believe in the four freedoms that came from Keith Reinhardt. And we really, when we really create an environment where there's freedom from fear, freedom from chaos, we actually do get the best out of people. Uh, and so I'm totally focused on, on that strategy in, in this new role. Uh, and, you know, despite the challenges that we have around us, you know, we still have to have people and culture as number one in terms of, you know, the foundations that will drive DDP as we, you know, uh, reimagine our future. What role does diversity play in culture and what is our action plan moving forward for diversity across our network? So diversity is, is core to uh, our future. And the way I look at diversity is making sure that we have uh, a workforce that is diverse and represents the, the communities and the culture uh, where we operate our businesses. So each of our agencies have to set their own targets when it comes to uh, creating a truly diverse DDB. Uh, and, you know, for me, it's gender equality, it's representing minorities. It's actually even looking at um, ageism, 
you know, there's a lot of lot of elements of uh, diversity that we have to explore in our markets to, as I said before, make sure we're truly representing uh, the communities that we're, where we operate. Uh, and uh, I'm really pleased with the progress we're, we're making around the world. Some of the programs in India, in Australia, New Zealand, the US, uh, I just looked at some stats the other day where 40% of our recent uh, hirings have all been from minority groups, which uh, really reflects, you know, what the uh, the US is, for example. So uh, we're making great progress. We've still got a long way to go, uh, uh, but uh, you know, I'm really excited. And the other thing for me, also, when I think about diversity, is making sure our our creative is truly diverse in terms of the the type of talent that we use in the amazing ideas that we create. So. You know, we've got a role to help our clients give true diversity uh, messages as they uh, connect with uh, their consumers. You recently returned to New York from New Zealand, where you've been for the last few months. How are you approaching return to work and flexibility in New York? And what's your view on the future of uh, the office? That's a, a hot topic at the moment. Yeah, it is a hot topic, and and we'll be putting out some more formal communication uh, shortly. But uh, from my point of view, flexibility is with us uh, forever. And we have to accept there's new ways of working. We've done lots of experimenting over the last 12 months in particular. And uh, we have to uh, find new ways of working, uh, whether it be in the office or out of the office uh, going forward. The, the most important thing for me is how our teams work together. And I'll be empowering our leaders and our, 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 and that goes from the office leader down to different teams within our agencies to make the best decisions that suit those people in those teams, because we still have to be highly productive and efficient and super creative in everything that we do. And, you know, I, I, a combination of working in the office and working remotely is going to be the way that we actually create, you know, that the culture of the future for DDB. What, one of the things I, I, I think is really important, though, uh, you know, DDB is a learning institution. You know, we often talk about DDB being a university of creativity. And so for our younger staff in particular, you know, the physical being with people, being in meetings where, they, where you're learning the whole time is really important. So uh, I know for a fact some of the studies that I've, uh, I, I've been reading, uh, some of the experts I've been talking to, that's the thing that a lot of our young people are missing uh, working remotely. So, again, we have to have that right combination of, you know, freedom to work in a flexible environment, but how we come together in the office to learn is really important. And the other really important thing for me is the uh, creative combustion when the different talents of people come together to create ideas. Now, some of that some of that can be done remotely, but I firmly believe the best work will come where we're physically together uh, in the office or in spaces where we are inspired. So, uh, you know, you, we, as I said before, we will have a flexible uh, policy in terms of how we work going forward. But uh, my job actually is to make sure our agencies are creating that culture and environment where people want to be in the office. They want to be there together to create the ideas because it's only through that great creative that your careers will actually keep progressing. Um, and, and so for me, uh, the, the new office environment will be really important. So again, we have to then make sure the offices of the future are ones that suit our employees as well in terms of agility, in terms of how we sit together, uh, where we sit, how we collaborate. And importantly, what we're noticing as we're coming back from COVID in some markets, a lot of our clients want to spend more time in the agency. So are we creating spaces where our clients feel welcome, where they actually want to work with us uh, physically to, again, create um, those ideas and approve our, our ideas uh, in that process. Mm. I absolutely love the idea of DDB as a university for creativity. That is a great way of describing how we facilitate learning. 
How is this new hybrid way of working facilitating cross office collaboration? And how can our people get more exposure to other GDP offices and briefs? This was the number one question we were asked at our global conference earlier this year. So definitely people are looking at how they can get more exposure as the world opens up and work with different markets. Look, we've, we've again, through uh, COVID, we've had some amazing experiences. I mentioned earlier, uh, we've done a number of Volkswagen briefs where we've had up to seven, eight agencies from around the world all working uh, on those assignments. And uh, we've, we uh, had a great example where we had a, a Molson Cause campaign where we had multiple agencies uh, working on that, and it was a, ended up being a combination of DDB Sydney and Chicago who worked together on uh, one of those campaigns. So, again, I think we're learning that we can use talent from around the world to work on uh, briefs, uh, whether they be global briefs or just briefs for an individual market that needs some extra help. So, again, as I said earlier, we're learning a lot through COVID and uh, certainly Ari and uh, the rest of the uh, creative leaders around the world uh, are looking at ways where we can actually leverage the talent in our network more as we go forward. You'll be celebrating your 35th year with DDB in December, which is an incredible milestone. What advice would you give to others that are looking to learn from your career path? and maybe aspire to be global CEO one day too? Well, I'll pick up on, on what I said earlier in terms of about DDB being a learning institution. Uh, you know, I've stayed at DDB because, uh, you know, uh, it has been a, a university of creativity for me. It's something some, somewhere where I've always been learning and growing. Uh, I've been fortunate to work with some amazing leaders that have helped my career uh, progress. Uh, but uh, I think, again, that's uh, that's the thing that DDB can offer. And I think we do it better than a lot of other agencies in terms of helping people achieve more than they ever imagined they could while they're at DDB. And um, I must say that, uh, you know, uh, 35 years ago when I started at DDB, I didn't actually imagine that I could uh, be CEO. But over, over time, I've become more and more confident uh, through the experiences that I've been able to uh, enjoy in my career. Uh, and, you know, all I wish for is whether you're at DDB for three years, five years or 35 years, I just want to make sure that your career has progressed in uh, over that time and you have uh, fond memories of your time at DDB. And, you know, uh, don't get me wrong, I don't want people to leave. You know, I, um, I love it when I see people that are celebrating five years or 10 years at DDB uh, because that says to me we're doing something right. Uh, you know, we're in, a, we're in a strange world at the moment where we've all had to, uh, you know, work remotely for long periods. And I think that unsettles a lot of people. And I know a lot of our people have suffered with uh, mental health issues and uh, the stress of working in, uh, alone and, in, and uh, in small apartments and that sort of thing. So for me, as we, as we progress, I sort of make sure we continue to create that environment where we can all learn and keep growing uh, despite the challenges we have in front of us. Mm. What advice would you give for people looking to take that next step and advocate for their career progression? I think for me, the thing is, is be a great listener. Uh, and, and also, yeah, so you really understand the, the challenges that are given to you. Uh, you know, you're, as I said, you're learning the whole time from people that are smarter than you. Uh, and, you know, you have to uh, plan uh, your own career, but also plan and execute what you, uh, your responsibilities at, at DDB brilliantly. Uh, you know, there's great, pe uh, there's great people around you always are there to help you. You know, I applaud people that put their hands up uh, and ask for help because, again, you know, it should be an organisation where people rally around those that need some help. Uh, that's not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of great strength because, again, that says to me that the organisation is there to, there to help, uh, help you grow and help you, uh, you know, deliver what's uh, uh, expected of you. Mm, that's great advice. So it's been a massive 12 months and there's definitely no signs of it slowing down. So what do the next 12 months look like? Well, for me, I'm... Uh, 
I'm an aggressive competitor. You know, I really believe in uh, you know the power of teams uh, and the power of uh, Diddy B people coming together to do amazing things. And you know, we've got many agencies around the world that are the market leader in their market. But I want Diddy B to globally be number one creatively, uh, and be also be known as one as an agency that's really transforming and innovating the whole time. And I just love some of the initiatives around the world in terms of expanding our capabilities, whether it be in gaming, digital data, technology, you know, uh, you know, as well as the traditional work that we've always been famous for. Uh, so, you know, I'm just going to keep accelerating the transformation of DDB and the aggressive pursuit of being number one and being the best in every one of our markets. And, you know, it's a journey. Uh, for some markets, it's actually defending their position as being number one. Others, it's going from number three to number one. Others, it's actually going from, you know, we might be only number 10 in the market. But what I want to see is the progression. If you're number 10 now, how do we get to number seven, number five, number three, number one over a four year period? You know, that's the reality. Sometimes it takes a bit of time to get an agency to where it needs to be, but that's going to be the driving force for all of our leaders. Well, hopefully when we have this conversation again next year, we can confidently say we are number one in every market. Thank you for joining me today, Marty. This has been our episode of DDB Talks and we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye.